In this video, I'm going to use Stack Crunch to create a histogram. Remember, a histogram is a chart or a graph that shows the frequency of a numerical um, variable or numerical data. In this particular data set, I am looking at proficiency exam, exam ex scores, excuse me, for students here at PA College for a study that in, two instructors did at our college. So I'm only going to be using this data here to look at one column. But you can see there's a variety of different columns. The semester the student took the class, whether they were a day or evening student, the instructor, the grade they received on their um, course, at the course, semesters that they uh, ago that they took another math class, and this is the column that I want, the proficiency score. I want to look at the frequency or the frequencies of each individual value. So how many times did 88 appear or 80 or 76? I want to put all of these values here. I want StatCrunch to go in and calculate the frequencies. We already saw something similar to this when we went into um, stat and table and we created a frequency table. We've already seen that. Now we want to create a frequency graph for a numerical value. That is called a histogram. Notice when I click on histogram, I only have two choices. Do I want to find the frequencies for the semesters ago? So if I look, let me move this over here, semesters ago, or proficiency scores. Notice those are the only two columns that contain numbers. The other columns are categorical. And that should make sense. Histograms will only do and only calculate the frequencies of numerical data values. So I want to select the proficiency score. I'm not going to group by anything. I want to look at the, the frequency. I could look at the relative frequency, as we've already discussed as well. I'm not going to put anything where I want it to start or the width of the bins. The bins are the groups, as we already know. It's also the classes. And I'm not going to overlay the normal distribution. You can overlay a, another distribution. Maybe I do want to click on value above the bar. That will put the number of values within each class above the bar. And here we could label the y-axis and the x-axis, but all I want to do now is just look at it, see what it looks like, and then come back and I, I can edit some of this stuff. So when I hit compute, I get a histogram, and some of these columns are too tall, I get a histogram of the proficiency scores. Remember, it sh should, as we go back, go back and edit this x-axis or add a title to make it appropriate. But all I care, care about right now is just being able to look at it and create it. So the good thing about these histograms, when you create them, you can go back in and edit it at any time by clicking on Edit. Let's say I don't want those bins. Actually, let me hit Cancel. I want to look here. It looks like, if you can count here, there's one, two, three, four. There's four classes within this group of ten. So that, to me, is telling me that the, the class size is relatively small. So what if I wanted to have the class size or the bins not be two and a half or two as it appears but by fives. Then I can go in here select bins and I want it to be width of five. Hit compute and it will update. So now you can see from 60 to 70 it's split in half. So there's 16 between 60 and 65. Between 65 and 70 there's 32 and so forth. You could do that as many times as you want. So maybe I don't want five, maybe I want eight. So when you click Compute, it will create the bin size is now 60 to 68, 68 to 76, and so forth. So you can go in and edit this to what you think might be appropriate. So I'm going to keep five here. Something else we want to be able to do is look at this, and it looks like there's a relatively bell-shaped curve here. I mean, there is a big spike right here between 80 and 85. However, it's relatively bell-shaped. Most of the values are in the middle, and as we go out towards the ends, we have less frequency. So if you were asked, is this approximately normal, I would say so. It's an approximately normal distribution here because, or normal curve, because it's relatively spiked in the middle, and then as we go along the outside, it starts to dwindle. Most of the frequencies occur in the middle. So this is how we create a histogram. Keep in mind you can download it at any time by clicking on download. 
and right on this page if you you can change the name of it and once you hit OK it will save it to your my downloads folder